Hey everybody, this is the fourth here. And in this video, I'm going to show you how the different parameters of 3D Reverb 2 work. And if you're watching this video as a part of the mixing tutorial series, even if you don't use FL Studio, I would probably recommend you to watch it because a number of these parameters will translate directly to other algorithmic reverbs and my explanations of how these parameters work and what they are may be helpful regardless of what algorithmic reverb plugin you use. So you can see the Fruity Reverb 2 is split into a few different sections, and I'll just be covering these sections from left to right. In this first section here, the top parameter you have is mid-side. And what this does is it decides whether the reverb effect will be processing the mid channel or the side channel. And when I play the sound, you may be able to hear a difference. I'll turn the reverb up a little bit more so you can hear uh, the how it sounds. So this is with it set to mid. And this is with it set to side. So there's a pretty noticeable difference there. And one big thing to take note of is if you have a completely mono sound, like this little sound here, if you put a reverb on it, which is set to reverb only the side channel, there will be no reverb at all. And this is because you have to have a stereo sound in order to have anything in a side channel, if you were to split it up into mid and side channels. So for the stereo clap, it will have a reverb. But for this mono sound, it will not. So whether you decide to use mid or side is up to you and up to the sound you want. Using the side option can be helpful if you want a nice amount of reverb without really washing out the sounds. So you can hear with this example. The reverb kind of sounds a bit better with it set to the side, just because it's not as dominant. But there are other things you could do, and in a lot of cases you will want to keep it set to mid. So that's the mid side option. If you want to learn more about mid and side channels, there is a video later in this tutorial that talks about mid side EQ, but essentially the idea is the same except it's with reverb instead of EQ on the mid versus the side channel. So the knob below the mid side is called H cut or high cut, and this sets at what frequency your high frequencies start to be filtered off. And basically this parameter sets a cutoff frequency for a low pass filter on that reverb. And you'll be able to hear this if I adjust it while playing that sound. Especially if I just play the clap. So if you want more high frequencies present in your reverb, you would want to have that set higher. And if you want less high frequencies, you would keep it lower. And then you have L cut or low cut, which is the opposite of the high cut. So this sets the cutoff frequency of a high pass filter. And you'll be able to hear this better if I play the kick. And this can really be helpful when you're putting reverb on drums or any kind of sounds that have a lot of low mids or bass. You can adjust this to allow yourself a nice amount of reverb without it getting muddy. Like you can hear if this was just my normal kick in a song. That might be a little bit muddy of a sound, so I might set that higher. And get a little bit cleaner of a sound. 
Now the next parameter we have is the delay and this is a pre-delay and what a pre-delay does is it adds a bit of delay between the original hit of the sound and the reverb. So you'll see if I turn this up pretty high there's quite a bit of delay between the dry sound and the reverb sound. And one thing to note about the Fruity Reverb 2 is the pre-delay only adjusts the wet signal. It doesn't adjust the early reflection signal. And I will talk a little bit more about what those two signals are uh, when I get to that part. So just keep in mind that the pre-delay only affects the wet and not the ER or early reflections. So you can set the pre-delay to be how you want. I'm going to have another video in this section of the tutorial where I take a little bit of a look at how you can create different senses of depth um, by using the pre-delay and the other parameters, but the pre-delay is a specific kind of focus of that video. So that might be something to watch. And along with this pre-delay parameter, you have this little T button below it. And if you don't know that it's there, it's probably pretty easy to miss. But what this does is it allows you to set your delay. Um, if you look up at the tips bar, you can see that with it on, it's setting it to a number that represents the number of beats. And if I turn it off, it sets it in milliseconds. So if you want the timing of your pre-delay to be determined based on the tempo of your project, that's something you would want to enable. And it can give you kind of a pretty cool rhythmic, of a very subtle, almost subconscious kind of rhythmic element to your reverb. And especially if you want to do certain types of effects, that can be really useful. And below this, you have your room size. And the Fruity Reverb, you can see this little window here is meant to represent the room that this reverb is creating. So you can see if I take that size down, the room gets smaller, and if I turn it up, it gets a lot bigger. So if you want to put your sound in a smaller room, you would keep it smaller. Or if you want a really big, you know, really huge reverb sound, you could put it up a lot more. And you can see that this room kind of has a number of different walls on it. You know, it's really cylindrical shaped right now. And if I change the diffusion parameter, this changes the number of walls. And so you can hear that with it set really low. You can clearly hear all the different reflections from that reverb. Uh, but as I turn it up higher, it starts to get a lot smoother. So you can adjust this depending on the sound you want. If you want a smoother reverb, you'd probably want to have it set higher. And the next parameter is your bass multiplier. And what this does is it changes the decay time of the bass frequencies. So if I turn this up a lot, and then turn it down, you should be able to hear that the bass is decaying uh, longer with that set higher. So setting this to different things can kind of just change the mood that that reverb has and possibly clean up your mix a little bit if you want less of a uh, bass sustain from that reverb. But you know that's something you'd have to really listen to and decide what you want. 
And then the cross option is directly related to that base option. And what it does is it sets the frequency at which this base multiplier starts to affect the sound. So if you look at the uh, tips bar up here, you can see if it's set to 1000 hertz, then this base multiplier knob starts to affect any frequencies that are below 1000 hertz. So you can hear if I turn the base multiplier all the way down and turn the cross all the way up, and then turn the cross all the way down. You can hear it's a little bit different. It's pretty subtle, but hopefully you can hear that difference. And really it just sets the frequency at which the bass multiplier starts to change the sound. And kind of related to these two, you have the high dampening. And what this does is it basically reduces the amount of high end in your reverb over time. So rather than the high cut, which just sets a filter on it, the high dampening is dependent on the decay of that reverb. So if I turn it up a bit, you can hear that the high end kind of sustains a little bit longer than if I turn it down. And you can hear this better with longer decay times. So you should be able to hear that the high dampening is causing the high end to kind of decay more quickly when it's set lower than when it's set higher. So in a way you can kind of think of it as being opposite to that base multiplier. and. The decay time, which I kind of already showed you, it just decides how long the reverb lasts for. So if you have it set lower, the reverb will be shorter, and if you have it set higher, it will be a lot longer and sound a lot bigger. So now you have this section here, and I want to start by looking at the stereo separation parameter. If I turn the stereo separation to the right, it will merge the sound to mono. But it only affects the reverb sound, it doesn't affect the dry signal. You can hear that the clap is still stereo. But the reverb is mono. So the stereo spread knob only affects the reverb. And if I turn it all the way to the left, it will make it as wide as it is able to make it. And I can set it anywhere in between being completely mono and being quite stereo to get the desired sound that I want. And now you have your dry, ER, and wet sliders. And I'll take a look at these by soloing them one at a time. So your dry signal, it's going to be the same as your dry signal in other plugins. It's just how much of the original unaltered signal comes through that plugin. And the ER slider, which stands for early reflections, determines how much those early reflections come through the sound. So the early reflections are basically going to be the first reverb sound that you will hear before you kind of hear the rest of the reverb. And like I said, with that pre-delay time, you hear the early reflections as you normally would and the wet sound is delayed. So you can hear that. You hear those early reflections. And so the early reflections are something that happen in a real room. And they're just kind of the first reflections that you hear before you hear the full reverb. 
And that's what the wet level is. It's just that reverb sound. So you can adjust all of these to get exactly the amount of reverb and exactly the character you want. So maybe you want a decent amount of early reflections, but you don't want so much of that wet sound. So those are the parameters of the Fruity Reverb 2. Hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of how you can use the Fruity Reverb 2 to build exactly the kind of reverb you want. And like I said, uh, a lot of these parameters are going to transfer to other algorithmic reverbs. But if you do use a different algorithmic reverb plugin, you would want to check the manual to make sure you know exactly how everything works.